Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. Are you ready to bring your panda skills to the next level? Following along this video, you definitely will. We will cover grouping and pivoting data with pandas. This will help you analyzing large data sets in a very efficient way. Interestingly and sadly at the same time, we will work with gun violence data from the USA. I already imported pandas as pd here and read in the CSV file. Don't forget to specify the file path here. But even more important than that, if this video is helpful for you, consider supporting this channel. Thank you very much. Our first step, as always, is to print out this data frame to see what we got. So we are getting a data frame containing of, wow, 240,000 rows and 29 columns here. So every row is containing a shooting and the columns are giving us the information on this shooting. For example, date, state number of killed person, uh, injured persons, and many more information. So how can I get an overview of this information? By just printing out the column names, and that is easily done by calling the raw frame and then just take the columns as the argument. And now you are seeing all column names here, and that is actually pretty helpful to see what you're interested in, what you want to analyze. In this case, I'm interested in the date, the state where it happened, and the number of killed persons. So I'm slicing this raw data frame, and we already learned how to do that, so let's just define a new data frame here. And now we are slicing the data frame with containing the state, the date, and I said the number of killed persons. And that's pretty much it. So if we are printing this out, we are getting this more lucid data frame with the relevant information. And now let's consider the date column here. I want to get rid of the day and the month. So I'm only interested in the year of the incident. Pandas has a pretty nice built-in function to achieve that. There are other ways I know, but I'm showing you the pandas built-in function as it's really, really useful. So right now, this column is stored as string values. And I want to transform it first to a daytime object. And I can achieve that by calling the pandas built-in function to date time. And for the argument, I just need my column, which is the date column. So if I'm doing that, I'm getting the column as a date time object, which you see here as the data type is date time. So what we have to do now is to just reassign the column. You could also create a new column, but I'm just reassigning it here. So I'm calling df date equals to this transformed daytime frame. With this transformed frame, I can extract the year. So let's do that by typing in df date dot dt dot year. And if we're executing that, as you see, we are getting this whole data frame containing the years only. And this is what we are just storing again to our date column. And now we are checking the whole frame again. And this is what we wanted to achieve, right? So we have the date column now as years here. Perfect. Let's move on. Now my goal is to get the total number of killed persons per year. And I can achieve that by grouping data in pandas. How does grouping in pandas work? First, you have to specify the group object. And we are doing that right now by defining grp for group. And then we're using df.groupby. And now you have to specify the group argument. And because we want to specify by years, we are taking the date column here as the argument. And once we have created that and print that out, we are getting nothing but the information that a group by object was created, right? The next step when you're grouping is to use aggregation functions. And we are interested in the sum of the specific year, right? So, for example, I'm interested in the sum of the killed people in 2018. And now I'm using this group object here, grp, and use my sum function. And what I'm getting then is what I wanted to achieve. And that is the sum of the number of killed persons in the specific year. 
to get a better overview, we could even plot this data. So let's just do that and let's use a bar chart here. Now let's take color as red. And what we are getting here are the number of killed persons per year. And we unfortunately see a rising tendency here, right? And 2018 and 2013 is just no sufficient data as it seems. Let's take the other example now and group this by the state. And we are just amending this group argument here, execute that. And now we are not plotting because this will be messy because we have 51 states, right? Um, and then we are just using, as before, the sum function. And now we are getting this data frame here. And as you see, the date column makes absolutely no sense because the dates are just being summed up. That makes no sense at all. But this column makes sense. This is the total number of fatalities for Alabama at all. So over the whole time horizon. Other pretty high numbers we're seeing in California, Florida, and yes, Texas. But you have to be cautious with your interpretation because these are states with a rather high population, right? So we have to see that in relation. But nevertheless, it's cruel, right? It's terrifying, but um, keep that in mind when interpreting such results. So the next step is to do a double grouping. So I'm interested in both the year and the state. So let's actually do that. As before, firstly, we are creating our group object and let's just call it group two now. And then the exact same syntax. So df group by, and now we have to create a list of two conditions. So we have state here and we have the dates here. And that's it for that. So let's scroll a bit down here. And now the same thing again. So we are just using group two dot sum. And what we are getting is the data frame containing the state and the particular year. So as an example, in 2000, let's say 2014. In 2014, 325 people were killed in Alabama. Or in 2015, 21 people were killed in Wyoming. Just to clarify, and this is important to understand, these data frames are working as normal data frames. So if we would store this in a data frame calling dfx and execute that, we could just use our selection or filtering criteria like log and then search for, for example, for California. And what we are getting then are the numbers for California here. And to make it even more fancy, you could uh, use an input function just as an idea. This is not important. Input function here, which state you want to check. So let's do that. And let's type in Texas here. And then you're getting the numbers for Texas. Or let's take Hawaii. Spelled like that, yeah. You're getting the numbers for Hawaii. But as I said, this is not important. The next feature we're going to take a look at is very important and very, very powerful and useful, and that is pivoting. Pivot tables enable you to work with large data sets efficiently. So let's do that. Let's create a pivot table and let's just store that in a variable which we are calling pivot. So pandas has a function which is called pivot underscore table. And now you need to specify the arguments for this pivot table. First is the data frame. This is in our case df. The second one is the values which you are interested in. And this is in our case the number of killed persons. Also you have to specify an index and we are going to take the state value. But this could be our date value as well. But you will understand in some seconds why I'm taking state value here. The columns are of course then our dates. And now you have to specify, and that, that is the most important thing here, now we have to specify the aggregation function. And you already know what aggregation function we are interested in. So this is the argument agfunc, and we are interested in the sum. And this is what we are specifying here, okay? So if we're executing that, 
and print out this pivot table, we're getting this highly informative data frame here, right? So we got the date dimension here and this date dimension here. So let's take an example. In 2017, 1,400 people were killed in California. And with this data frame, you can do further analysis like tendencies in specific states or a comparison between certain states and stuff like that. But you can do that on your own. What I also want to share with you in this video is to handle those pivot tables. So let's approach to um, just selecting data from this pivot table. And that is easily done by, let's define a new pivot table here. And we are just using our normal data frame selection criteria or selection function. And this is log. And we are skipping the rows here. So this is just skipping the index, which is the states. And we are just taking 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017 here because um, 2013 and 2018 were not sufficient as we saw above. So if we're executing that and print that out, we're getting a new pivot table containing only 2014 until 2017. That's pretty nice, right? So you can shape your own pivot tables with your criteria, which you are interested in. So that is pretty awesome, right? Let us finalize this video by taking a look at the countries with the most fatalities. Let's call them set five. And we are accessing that by pivot one, which we just created. And now we need the column which we are interested in, and this would be 2017. You can take whatever year you like here. And then we're using the n largest function. And this is providing us the countries with the most fatalities here. So California is the country with the most, then comes Texas, then Illinois, then Florida, then Ohio, at least in 2017. You can do the comparison for yourself. So what can we do with that data? Well, we can visualize that. And I'm showing you a trick here. We could get the index of these values here to get the state names. So if I'm typing an index here, I'm getting the names of those states which contain the top values. And now I could create a chart. I'm just calling a chart here. And I'm using pivot one and the selection criteria lock. And now I'm taking this set five index as the locator and I'm keeping the columns as they are. So let's execute that and plot that with a bar chart. And what we are getting now is the comparison of the set five and we are seeing the tendency over the years here. If you are interested in this data, I have a mini project suggestion for you. You could get the number of inhibitants, add them to this pivot table and check the relation to get the relative number. So drop me a comment if you have done that. With that being said, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to this channel to support my work and I'm seeing you in the upcoming videos. Thank you again. Bye bye.